Minister, U.S. President Barack Obama is lobbying lawmakers to approve his proposed military strike against Syria, insisting that the Syrian government was behind last month's chemical attack near Damascus. Obama has already sent a draft bill to Capitol Hill. He's urging lawmakers to endorse the use of force on Syria. The president has also highlighted his decision for a unilateral military strike without a U.N. mandate. Still, it's not clear if the war-weary lawmakers will endorse Obama's push for action, with some of them openly skeptical about the mission. I feel terrible about the chemical weapons that have been used. However, we know that chemical weapons have been used in other instances, and we did not take military action. In my mind, it's, it's far from settled. It's is, uh, not something that should be undertaken lightly. The president has said that that the this effort would be uh, limited in scope and duration, and I I don't know exactly whether the resolution is that limited. For more on that story, international lawyer from Vancouver, Mr. Alfred Lambermont Weber joins us now. Sir, welcome to the program. Uh, let's start off uh, with the notion that uh, Obama is completely disregarding international law and the United Nations Security Council and its mandate. Yes, of course. Well, here and, and, and of course, the, the, any attack upon Syria would be a violation of of uh, the the UN Charter against aggressive war. Now, what Obama's trying to do is is that under the U.S. Constitution, the U.S. Congress has the sole power to declare war under Article One, Section Eight. However, there's the War Powers Resolution of 1973, which requires the president to notify Congress within 48 hours of committing armed forces to military action and forbids armed forces for, for remaining for more than 60 days with a further 30-day withdrawal period without authorization of the use of military force or a declaration of war. So that he, he, he is trying to go and get some political cover and some legal cover behind him because of the historic and unprecedented um, uh, vote in the UK House of Commons, uh, which has voted uh, to deny uh, uh, the UK uh, military uh, an attack on the on Syria and to deny the US its primary ally. Also in France, the polls show that 65% of the public is against this strike. Now, what what we see now is that uh, the Congress is very equally divided with even um, uh, some of the lead senators saying that, that, that it's going to be 50-50. Uh, you, you have among the Republican hawks are against it because there's no uh, sustained strategy. Uh, many of the Democrats are even against it because against approving a, a, an, an attack because they say that, again, there is no strategy behind this. What is remarkable is that even though there is um, documented evidence that the, the alleged uh, gas attacks uh, may have been done, uh, by uh, U.S. allies in the region using gas manufactured in Saudi Arabia, some even suggestion that Prince Bandar of Saudi Arabia was behind these attacks, that has not been raised either in the executive or in the U.S. Congress. So uh, whether or not that will be raised in this coming week remains to be seen. Mr. Weber, two other issues that have also come up. One about the, uh, the duration and the manner of the strikes that will be carried out. Uh, Obama, uh, the Obama administration basically said that it will be surgical, precise, and limited in scope. I'd like to get your thought on that. And also about the fact that let's say he does get congressional backing to attack Syria. Does that still justify the fact that the international community is against it, international law is against it, and the United Nations uh, and the Security Council are against it? Well, to, to answer your, your, your last question first, uh, 
Absolutely not. Even if the U.S. Uh, Congress were to approve this under the War Powers Resolution of 1973, the fact remains that any attack by the United States upon Syria would be a violation of the U.N. Charter prohibition against aggressive war, which is the more se most serious of war crimes. That is the Nuremberg-level war crime, and that is starting an aggressive war against another nation. And there's only one exception to, to that, and that is the right of self-defense. And in this case, the United States is not being attacked. So that exception does not apply. So that under international law, the U.S. Congress cannot sanction or provide legal cover to any attack by the U.S. And in this case, because Britain, who was uh, 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 the, the U.S.'s ally in Iraq, where we have an exact analogy to this situation, where Tony Blair, the U.K. Prime Minister, and George W. Bush, the, the, the U.S. President, have been adjudged war criminals by the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal and other tribunals. Uh, uh, here, it would even be more egregious because the U.S., would not have an ally such as the UK. Thank you very much, international lawyer Mr. Alfred Lambermont Weber.